flush up. Nang kape. <laughs> okay, good morning again. So, this is our second recording. So, kasi mabilis lang yung lesson. Okay, so, let's have the next skill. Um, wait. Ay, mali. Sini? Sure. Okay. So now let us have the productive skill. A while ago, we have discussed the testing, the rep, uh, receptive skills, yun yung mga listening, reading. So I showed you some examples of tests in the reading comprehension and listening comprehension. It's for you to find out on your own. Now we'll have the productive skills. Now, when you were younger, you are asked to, okay, you listen, you read, and then you will answer. Now, as you grow old and as the test gets more, um, it gets harder, you will now have to produce materials so that they would know that you understand. One of the things that you are tested in college, in college muna before us, is you should have a research. Okay? You need to produce something. And when you research, you talk to people, you read, you read, you read, you read. And you will uh, produce it by uh, based on the readings, based on the findings. One of the best products in college is research. You must have a solid research, okay? So that's for college. But when it comes to testing language skill, we have, um, we have to test the speaking and writing. Speaking and writing is very important to us, especially to us teachers. Why? Because when we speak clearly, when we speak better than the rest of the class, they will think that you are good. Um, you must be confident at all times. Even if you're wrong sometimes, the grammar is wrong, but at least you speak confidently. Writing, on the other hand, is much harder because there's no emotions, especially if you have the formal formal writing or academic writing or letter writing, the one that you use for business purposes. You should have, you should pick more uh, clear words because you don't have the, I cannot ha you cannot touch the person if they can see your face like this one. That's why it's harder. Face to face is better because you could share everyone. Hi everyone, this is me, I'm your teacher. Uh, this is me, I'm the test taker. And I could, you could, you could have the enthusiasm, but when it comes to writing, it's different, okay? So you need to have better understanding to writing because you need to know a lot of words because they can see your face. They can see that you're very convincing. That's why you need to have a better thing. That's why mas mahirap tinitest ang pagsusulat. This skill is more visible than the other two because you could check um listening skill and reading skill they could only be tested by right uh by answering some sort of questions okay so that it's either verbally or by writing however in speaking and writing it's hard because in when you're speaking you don't have the uh, you're talking while you're speaking you're processing two things the speech and the brain i mean the thinking part and the speaking part and writing part is mahirap ayon. Wherever you go, when you see a person is not fluent in speaking English, you always assume that it's not smart. Actually, that's not true. But that is what we believe in. When we were young, we were always told speak in English properly, di ka bobo. But actually, that doesn't guarantee that you are really smart. But some people they could hide their um their their brains if they speak. Good. Kasi nga inisipin natin marami siyang alam na words. Although that is not usually true, we cannot deny that this person seems confident. People who are good at speaking can ace job interviews, of course. Aside from speaking, writing is also essential. People who are good at hand can express themselves freely, freely and orderly. So you can see, when the people, for example, um, you have a job interview, and you don't speak, you said, uh, okay, uh, based on your, of course, the first thing that they will check is your grades. You have, uh, uno, 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 very good. 
But when they ask you, um, how's your day, Miss Applicant? Um, 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 I'm, I'm fine, ma'am. Um, um, marami kang gut feelers. So who will hire you? What they need is in person. Okay, especially if you're applying for a teacher. Oh, this one seems is not confident. Okay, so I don't like this person. We need a confident person. So this one who is maybe average but could speak clearly, he, she has a voice, is very good and very charming. Even if he, he or she is not that pretty or not that handsome, if she he or she is confident and could speak, she will stand out. Minsan hindi yan sa ganda. Minsan nandiyan yan sa um, the way you stand out for job hunting, job applicants, is how you speak. It is very important. That's why you should not be shy. Okay? So these are the sample tests. And let's have the testing speaking. Speaking, establishing, and sharing meaning through the use of verbal and nonverbal symbols in different contexts. This lesson, we will not talk about the eloquence of developing a prepared speech. Instead, we will discuss one's ability to carry a conversation using the language learned effortlessly. So, um, testing speaking, according to Harris 1969, must, uh, the things that you will test would be pronunciation, grammar, word choice, and fluency. Okay, those four are the different things that you need to check. When we check pronunciation, it is based on the communicative approach. As long as the receiver comprehends it, it is considered acceptable. That is the reason why some people who are working, you OFWs, when they work abroad and they say, yes, you do that, you do that, it's fine, it's fine. Oh, move it there, move it there. Okay. So you could understand that. Especially in America and other native language, they are used to people speaking as long as they speak in English, they do not laugh. Understanding, it is fine. But in Philippines, since we are um, producing solid workers, very good workers, saka mahirap talaga ang education sa atin, English is very important. And one of the thing is pronunciation. You should pronounce words correctly. And um, even if you have, um, even if, Sometimes they say that Misaya doesn't pronounce it correctly. Well, and ganon. We need to pronounce the words correctly. That's why we need to practice. For example, um, you have S defect. And you can search how could you minimize those things. Diba? For example, you meron kang F. F. Okay, so, na ano ka pa F. Research. Anong ginagawa? Anong ginagawa nyo? In a good research. Diba? If you have those kind of problems, you don't need to laugh. But why don't you try to do something? Um, could I um, practice um, speaking S's? Should I have some tongue twisters? Or maybe I could do something. See a doctor or you practice on your own. You could do that. And it would be nice of you to do so. So, or, or you could, instead, uh, when you say the SS word, you could not speak fast. You could speak slowly so that you could say research. Ma'am, I have R defect. Ayan, may mga, may mga R defect. Ruler, lulel. Diba, may mga ganun, R, some, especially Japanese. But you need to speak it anyway. So, what you need to do is you... Little by little, you know, you put the dead, she cannot pronounce it correctly. You need to, little by little, focus, train your tongues. So maybe it will help you. Listen to your teacher uh, reading the sentence below. So circle the word you hear. He never seems. Okay, so this one, um, the test taker, dapat maayos siya magpronounce. Kasi they will encircle, he never sings. Sings, sing, mm, 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 mm. so sings. Okay, so everybody will listen. The ball surprised everyone. The band, the band, the bang, bang, yung bang, bang. Simply, ang we will use the standard. Yung a nga a, gano. So the bang surprised everyone. Okay, he had two impressive wins. Unless you're asking for Lucifer, he has wings. 
your brother ran yesterday or ran yesterday. So, yun, titignan natin. So, that's an example of pronunciation test. Okay? So, aside from that, we also have, listen to this, say, column A, thin. And repeat after me. Ganun yun, di ba, si teacher? Thin. 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 Sun. Sun. Winds. So, di ba, meron pang mahabang stick na gumagana. Uh, winds. Okay, so that's an example of this. And of course, um, are different and then below something. Okay, when we test grammar, we have a lot of grammar tests. When test grammar, we should of course test the usage of verb forms and tenses, nouns and pronouns, adjectives and adverb forms. So that's why that's how we test grammar. However, when we have when we test grammar for oral communication, mas mahaba pa. Why? Because we have the grammatical usage. When we say grammatical usage, you should have the sentence conversion, um, answering questions and expansion, so no modification, so coordination, coordination, etc. Um, word transformation, so past to present, singular to plural, nouns to pronouns. So you need to have you need to test these things in oral communication because you need to think uh you need to listen to this person who speaks this way in this way so and of course it's hard that's why not all people are perfect for this one so this is our examples of tests just the best answer to complete each sentence would you rather have cheese blank and we had four or nor so so these are coordinating conjunctions an example is the reported speech so direct speech do you want to speak lemonade savannah asked me reported speech savannah asked blank if i wanted to speak lemonade so you change the direct uh questions to reported speech write your answer so you will just check the um you will just write the verb verb of reported speech why Nagibay ba ng word pag reported speech because it's already present. The direct speech is what is happening right at now at the moment. Someone is speaking, someone is speaking, and then you directly quoted it. But when we say reported speech, someone is actually telling other one about what happened to someone. Okay, for example, if um this someone is already speaking about the past, so past tense yung gamit niya. Tapos narinig ng isa, kinwento niya. So, double pass. So, double pass din dapat yung tenses ng verb. So, as you can see, it changes. It changes. Okay? Next one is testing the word choice. Testing word choice, an example is for our communication, the vocabulary proficiency. How many words does she know? Um, because some words could function differently. For example, um, what else? Um, um, there we have um, connotation and denotation. Sometimes um, some words are associated with this event, um, and some words are associate are that is the plain meaning of word. That is why we must learn that supplying lacking parts of the sentence, selecting from a given list words in appropriate. So an example: Maria and Jean had a blank romance. They met and married within two months. Oh, aniyan. Hurricane romance ba? Whirlwind romance? Typhoon romance? Cyclone? We all know that A, B, C, D, they are related to um, some storms, di ba? But what is the word we usually use for this matter, for a romance? Okay? Whirlwind ba? Typhoon ba? Cyclone? Another, desiring to do good to others. Um, actually, these three are somehow synonyms, but they are different, okay? So we need to distinguish which is which. So those are some examples. And testing fluency is not easy because um, if, we need to uh, if we want to measure fluency, we have a lot of tests to do so. In speaking accurately, it is, import uh, it is hard because there are no ironclad rules about it. Speed alone cannot measure fluency. For example, you speak like this. Hi, my name is Yan Grace Okreswa. I am from Bulacan State University College of Education. And I am here. So, so you can see, wow, no sleep. 
but it doesn't guarantee that what you're saying is correct. Sometimes when you speak um, in a in a slower voice, it is better because you are in lecture. You are not speaking in front of a basketball court that needs to have a blow by blow action but you are discussing something to the students and the students are taking down notes and they're trying to comprehend um they are listening from um english and they're processing in filipino especially those who are not using english uh every time so they're processing what's happening and then write it down put some use that is why sometimes especially for kids when you would like to each kids you don't you cannot speak too fast because the students could under cannot understand i remember um this is filipino class there was a demonstration teacher for our one of my filipino teachers Akin ano. Pero kasi i am the uh that would be the um, oral position parang um team leader for oral communication department Ay, communication department basta english and filipino so there was this demo <laughs> nag demo yung isa kong co-faculty na so nag demo siya na ang oh, haba yung lesson niya as in mahaba kaya lang sobrang bilis niya magsalita so what happened is um kasi pag kinakabahan siya or excited sa lesson nagiging mabilis siyang magsalita so, sabi niya, magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Ano bang gagawin na? <laughs> Alam mo, yung, yung nangyari is, na-hire naman siya, kaya lang, or comments is, napagod kami. So, it's hard for us to understand, to comprehend you. Kasi, if you speak very fast, kahit buti na lang Tagalog, kasi kung English, imagine mo, kaling nga. <laughs> Ganun niya. Minsan din, um, um, nag-host din yun. Ang bilis-bilis din niya mag-host ngayon. So we have decided now, when you host, I will stand in the middle so that I can say, dahan, 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 dahan. The students cannot understand it. So sometimes fluency is not that good. And actually, it was reported by the students, napapagod sila if you speak fast. Actually, sa akin, napapagod din sila. Not because I speak fast, but because I, I turn the slides fast. Why? to avoid talking. Kasi, oh, sorry, hindi ganun sila na, ma'am, ma'am, tama na, tama na, tama na. Ang bilis mo mag-ano, ma'am, hindi to my day. <laughs> Sabi nila, my, 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 my day is like PowerPoint presentation because I have a lot of memes. And then my PowerPoint is like my day because I, I have fast moving. Sabi niya, ma'am, hindi to my day. Lecture to. Saglit lang. <laughs> Because I've observed they, they have time to speak. And every time I saw students talking, I changed the slides. But they have a hell of a lecture for that. Okay? So, this is testing comprehension. This is an example. This is a screenshot from um, a test of comprehension. So, comprehension is one of the most essential in comprehension. The students can reply quickly and accurately. Testing comprehension and speaking is more comfortable than the rest. Um, the teacher itself can make tests. Also, most students find it exciting to answer questions. When testing students' comprehension, the teacher can prepare checklists for measuring. So, content, diction, grammar, stage presence, those are. Actually, um, this, one is an, this one is an example of um, extemporaneous speech. Okay, um, sample two, the student speaks fast. The message is unmistakable. Number four, the student speaks fast. Okay, so that's an example. Okay, so we're done with speaking. Now we have testing writing. So writing is actually good because we always write, we need to write. So here are some tests, some things to be considered in testing writing. So number one is content. Number two is form, grammar, style, and mechanics. So when we test content, we are looking for specific details to the general idea, writing a general statement to the express uh, the main idea, and uh, identifying and deleting unrelated sentence in a paragraph. So we are uh, when we test the content, so we are looking for the ideas. We are looking for the main ones. Okay. 
form. So we're checking the ordering sentence in a logical order. Connecting ideas using an appropriate connector. So like um, some conjunctions. Uh, writing a topic of sentence. Ayan. So those are parts of form. For grammar, of course, you already know the parts of speech, the cases of nouns, cases of pronouns, number of gender and pronouns, uh, from, of verbs, derivational, so example, and syntactic patterns is a proper combination of words, dapat in order siya. So we have rules for the different, may mga patterns tayo, may mga rules tayo, subject and verb agreement, noun agreement, uh, putting S, pronunciation, lahat. Styles, variety of structures, so subject, verb, modifier, simple, and everything. Sometimes it depends upon the authors. Lexical items and mechanics. The proper use of symbols. So yun yung mga tinitest natin. So when it comes to writing, it's actually very hard, very tedious. Kasi wabasahin mo na, tinitignan mo pa yun. So when we test the contents, um, here are some examples. Content expressed in writing is always reminded by our teachers to have one idea. It is said that uh, an essay actually is and one idea. Kaya lang, it's a collection of um, different ideas that is related to one idea. Sabi nila yun daw yun. Kaya mali daw yung kaya lang kasi nag-practice natin. When we write an essay, especially an essay writing contest, we have five. So the introduction, the body should have two. Um, conclusion, tatlo pala, the body must have three. And then the conclusion. So, but sometimes three, uh, four is acceptable number. So, the start is an introduction, the body has two, and one is for the conclusion. So, it's very important to express it. Sample two, identifying, deleting unrelated sentence. So, example, yeah. So, and in genuine pedding, delete. For example, Garfield. Garfield is a comic strip featuring the cat Garfield, the pen. Oh, the, and the, their socially inept owner, jo, John Art Buckle. The main character is Garfield, who is lazy, overweight, orange cats. Three, he considers himself to be more intelligent than human or dogs. Four, he was named Garfield after his grandfather. Five, he hates Mondays and loves lasagna. So now, um, which among the following could be this that is irrelevant. I know most of them you can see. Ay, ano ba yan? Pare-pareho naman siyang um Pare-pareho naman silang pwede. Alam dito yung pwedeng tanggalin. So, example yan ng um deleting unrelated sentence. Testing form naman, sentence order, pwede yan. Um we have any mga sample testing grammar. So, Grammar forms, patterns, testing style. So these are just examples, and I think it, you could just read it anyways. Okay. So those are the different ways to test um, the receptive and productive skills. Next meeting, we shall be discussing testing. Um, how we go? Next meeting, medyo mahaba na tayo kasi literature test na tayo. And, and that's all. So, testing literature na tayo. And I would like to do the testing on literature with you. So, I'll be meeting you to next meeting. And I hope to see you. Bye, everyone.